By special request today, we're going to be doing a Tomica video. Looking at some of my old Tomica vehicles. We've got to find them first, that's half the fun. If you're new to the Hot Wheel Room, there's about 50,000 cars to look through here, but luckily I've got some sense of organization. I'd like to dedicate this video to Christoph, I hope I'm saying that right, probably not, and Austin, both of you guys have been asking and commenting about Tomica, and I'm going to do my very best to give you guys a video here showing you what I have, which is mostly older stuff. I believe it's up here, hidden away in the very top shelf of this mammoth closet or storage system. It used to be a closet. Now it's got thousands of Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Majorette, Tamika, however you like to say it. Everyone's got a different way of saying these. A lot of these are international brands. Anywho, let's get through. Hello viewers, it's been a while since you've seen my face. I have spent so much time in this Hot Wheel room, I, I just can't leave. I haven't been to a barber in who knows how long, so that's why I've got this crazy hair going on. I'm, I'm trapped in my little world here, so. Anyways, we're gonna try and find these Tamika. I always happen to call them Tomica. You'll probably find me interchangeably calling it different things, but uh, I have a feeling it's up in here somewhere. I could have probably skipped this part of the video, but I wanted to give you guys a face-to-face -face a little bit, show you what uh, the process is to find stuff, and maybe you'll see something else along the way that, as I'm taking out cases here, that you might want to see, and you can request that. So. I've got these 48 car cases here. I uh, don't know if you guys can see this all that well, but let's hope for the best. This one is chock full of Yatming. Another cool vintage brand that I have that's still, I think, in existence. Like I said, I really don't know what's up here. There's just so many cases and cars. and It's kind of like a mystery box review here. Got another one. Might as well show you if I'm going to make you watch this video here along with me. What do we got in here? Looks like a very nice old 48 car vintage case. Got some lock, some of the old lockups here. This is going to be a Tomica video though. Play art. I don't think this is the uh, Tomica stuff. Kidco. Ah, what else we got in here? Not the right case. We'll keep, we'll keep searching. Keep hunting. Going for a hunt here. Another old matchbox case. Lots of these old matchbox cases. Ah, here we go. I don't even know how to pronounce that one. Made in Spain. Gisval? Gusval? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Maybe these aren't majorette. Those are really old majorettes there. Uh, nope. I thought this was the Tomica case, but I don't think it is. No. Let's see. Nope. Lots of cool stuff in there, though. Keep her going here. Oh, what do we got? This one doesn't even have a. Doesn't have anything on the top. That one's majorette. That case I've had since I was a child. All those cars, pretty much in that case, are ones I used to play with as a young boy. Another case here, this one's a little bit newer, kind of a generic one. I think I picked this up not too long ago. Yatming. Pretty much all Yatming in this one. Some of the newer stuff, well that's not saying much, it's probably still, it's not really newer. It's probably like 20 years old actually. I guess that's when you know you're getting older, when newer is 20 year old stuff in your collection. Up on my very tiptoes here. Oh, the old rough and tough case. I wonder what's in there. We're digging. More yatming. Lots more yatming. I don't know if you can see all that. There's lots of nice yatming in there. I can see more yatming below, so that's not it. Looks like it's going to be the very last case, most likely. Oh, my goodness. Look at this old matchbox case. Isn't that a beauty? More Yatming. More Yatming. Look at all that stuff. And these are not the, uh, these are not crappy little Yatmings. These are the ones with the opening doors. Look at that one. Opening doors on this Dodge Charger. 
I gotta really do more videos, don't I? I gotta show you all this stuff. I haven't even shown. I'm so busy showing green light, and I got all this other cool old stuff that I can be showing you guys. Another really cool matchbox case. This has to be it. It's the last 48 car one I got up there. Yes. Wouldn't you know, the last, the very last case is the Tomica. We're going to get this one out on the table. This is not the new stuff that you might be expecting to see. This is really, really old stuff. So let's, let's look at it. Let's crack it open. Okay, so in my throne here, my Hot Wheel diecast throne, about to review with you a vintage collection of approximately 48 well, I think there's about 48 Tamika cars in here. And these are really cool, interesting pieces that date back to as early as 1970. So a little rundown on Tamika, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it was introduced in 1970, launched with kind of a matchbox style packaging, so one of those little cardboard boxes. And... Uh, by 1972, they had 60 different models. Some of them of all scales, really. You got things like this: a Winnebago, hence the big W's for Chieftain, I think it was. Yeah, it's a Chieftain. And that one's got a copy of 1976 Winnebago Motorhome, 197th scale. Cool thing about these ones: usually they were all metal, as most older vehicles were back in the day. And with the scale and with a, a actual name on the bottom of each one. Look at this old bus. Suspension of some sort too. So we're going to kind of just go through all this. This is one 148th scale. Uh, Fuji semi-decker type bus. And there's the brand. Now Tamika is still in production today and doing probably better than it ever has really. They make... Uh, vehicles st still with the matchbox style case in some cases in some instances I should say those ones are called the limited uh, vintage limited vintage I believe they're very detailed for me in Canada it, cost, it would cost me about $25 a car to get them none of these ones here you see are these are, are the ones I'm talking about as they were released in you know the mid to late 2000s so in 1974 they had produced a hundred different cars and trucks. As you can see, there's all sorts of things. Here's a dump truck with the opening bin on it. No grill. And by 1976, the 100 millionth Tamika vehicle had been produced and sold. These are not all in ideal situ in condition here, but we're we're happy to see them, aren't we? I am. I haven't looked at these in forever, so this one's a Mazda light bus, made in Japan, 186 scale. Number 46, they also had a numbering system on them. If you don't have the packaging, you can still kind of figure out how old they are based on the numbering system and doing some online research. By 1984, Tamika had introduced a new type of packaging, a little bit different. And they've actually remained in that type of box packaging all the way since 1984 without much change. Look at that, even the cab tilts forward on this one cement mixer and in 1988 they had produced 120 different castings now not to say that these are all released continually but just to give you an idea of how many different castings there were this is a particularly interesting little car very skinny I don't imagine the scale was completely correct on all of these cars I mean, rarely was with any manufacturer before the uh, before Greenlight and Auto World and M2 and Johnny Lightning came out, even Johnny Lightning's not perfectly scaled. Uh, let's see what else was I going to tell you. By 1999, Tamika had introduced RC cars, and now they make some really fantastic, like one tenth scale vehicles. So, if you're into RC, which I am also getting into, I've recently gotten into RC. I have an Axial SEX10, one tenth scale. That's another story, though. But uh, Tamika does make the same level of super detailed RC vehicles. This is a really nice Cadillac. I really like that one. 
which is a Cadillac Seville 189th scale. Um, by 2005, that was their 35th anniversary. And they opened up their first direct retail store somewhere in, it was in Tokyo, that's right. Another opening door model right here. Dodge Cornet Custom, 174 scale. Really cool. By 2010, they've got 140 models now released by 2010, so that was six years ago. And in 2011, four more retail stores opened up. I think they were all in Japan. I'm not really sure. Anyways, that's pretty much all the uh, facts that I can remember at this point about Tamika. Some people call it Tamika, some people call it Tamika. I think it's probably pronounced Tamika, but through bad habits, I've been calling it Tamika. I hear a lot of other collectors calling it Tamika, so I'm trying to adjust. This is a really cool car. An Odrio wagon. Or no, <laughs> I can't read from all of here. You're seeing what the camera sees. That's a Cedric wagon. 165th scale. 1974. It's got the opening little piece in the back. So let's get these all out on the counter so we can see them all at once. And uh, if there's any of these that you have any questions about, of course, you can leave a comment in the comment box. Look at that old thing. It's got like a, some sort of delivery truck. We're just going to go through these one by one. We already looked at the Winnebago. And this is a very weird looking fire truck. Probably an airport fire truck. It's missing some pieces, I think. Chemical fire engine, one one hundred and fiftieth scale. So, like matchbox cars back in the day, the scales are all over the place because they had to fit in a certain size packaging. And if the trucks were tr proper scale, as they are in green lights and stuff, they wouldn't be able to fit all in the same packaging, and they would have to be all different prices. But this was a collection of vehicles that followed the. Uh, you know, a very specific kind of marketing plan that has been around for decades at the time. Selling cars that fit basically in the palm of your hand. Morgan Plus. Isn't that cool? A little bit of a crooked wheel. Okay, I keep these in order. I'm not going to know where they all go when I put them back, so I'll kind of do that. There's another Morgan. That one's in a bit rougher condition. And here's a cool little truck. Toyota Dyna, 168th scale. Let's zoom out a bit here. A whole bunch more Morgans. Now look at these ones. They have plastic bases. They're probably a bit newer, I would think. And maybe actually from a period when they might just be a ripoff brand of vehicle that look like the uh, Tamikas, because they do look a lot like them. But uh, this often happens, especially over in Japan. So many cheap cars getting made from kind of non-reputable dealers or manufacturers trying to ride the coattails of real brands like Tamika, which was pretty successful, of course. Keeping in mind they'd sold 300 million cars by 1984 and only being in production for 14 years. Just had to put the camera down to get that one out. This is the uh, airport truck, airport luggage truck. I believe, I believe it's got a jack. Yes, it does. It's probably painful watching me do this with one hand, but hey. It's got a jack, a scissor lift. American Airlines. The opening little plastic doors in the back, the, the pass-through luggage compartment right there. So the truck would pull up to the uh, airport terminal they put the luggage on here, the guys bring it into the box, the truck backs up, drives away, or you might even be in between, unloads. I don't know. Pretty cool though. Nice to see it's still functioning. If this was the Hot Wheel, there's a Hot Wheel version of this type truck. It doesn't look exactly the same, but same idea. And it sells for, I've seen it sell for $500 mint loose. I don't know what these things are worth. They have to be in pretty good condition like any collectible toy to be worth anything. Something like this. More nostalgic value. It's a big old Rolls Royce right here. 
Rolls Royce Phantom. Now, some of these cars are also interchangeably same casting as Yatming. This is a Yatming casting as well. I know because I, I have some Yatmings and I'd love to show them to you right now, but we'll go through these ones. Rolls Royce Phantom 6. In a separate video, we'll do the uh, Yatming comparison to show you the uh, similarities. Same with this car. This is also in the Yatming, so I'm not sure if they bought the rights to use the same casting or the molds or how that exactly went. There's always lots of history in these older, early, early vehicles. Look at that. It says Tommy on it. Tommy, as you may or may not know, uh, is a very large toy company, Japanese based, that is now worldwide and employs tens of thousands of people. And they have absorbed or purchased or saved, however you want to look at it, many, many brands of vehicles or castings, I should say, manufacturers, not castings, manufacturers. For instance, they, they bought Johnny Lightning when Johnny Lightning was struggling Unfortunately, they didn't uh, didn't do Johnny Lightning any favors by buying it out, but it did it did uh, perpetuate the brand for a little while longer till it kind of died, and now it's back again. So, oftentimes there's lots of these little companies out there that kind of go through rough spells, as most businesses come you know do, and when things get really rough, you got big companies like Tommy that will sweep in and potentially purchase small die-cast companies. So, Tommy does own a lot of manufacturers. Much like when you're buying a real car at the dealership, you might be buying a, oh, like an Austin Mini or something, you know, a Mini Mini Cooper as they call them. We already looked at that one. Well, that's, that's not a, that's not owned by, you know, Mini anymore. That's owned by who is it? Larger company. Anyways. Hope I'm not boring you with this. This is a cool one. Uh, this is a really old bluebird. Check that one out. Some of these castings they've actually retained too for the new limited uh, vintage limited series and they've just gone ahead and made some subtle changes like to the front ends or added some extra details. There's another bluebird, this time in gray. You can see they got really nice suspension. And these cars rolled really well. This one's got a bit of a curve in it, but very smooth rolling cars. Look at this one. So this one is what scale? 1 50th. And you put that one next to say the one 150th scale this thing should be about the third of the size of this truck or this this truck should be about that big at least that's one thing for me personally I irritates me and they're hard to show it's cool to have cars like this that's a really nice uh, Volkswagen Rabbit I think Volkswagen Golf I spent a good money on that one. I remember I just bought that one not too long ago. It's really nice. Vintage piece as well. But yeah, it's uh, it's hard to show. I mean, it's easy to put these cars in the Plano cases because guaranteed they're all going to fit. But you got to kind of organize them in such a way that you don't have Austin Minis next to cement trucks. Or it just looks kind of like toys, really. This one's a plastic bottom. You don't see too many of that, but opening rear cowling on this Ferrari. Cool. And we've we got here a Lotus. Lotus Europa. Nope. Elite. Elite. Lotus Elite. That's cool. Opening doors once again. Nice suspension. And what do we got here? Nice Mazda RX-7, I think. Yep. Okay. Well, that is really cool. And here's one in green. 
These ones are in really nice condition, actually. This one, however, looks like a uh, Toyota Celica. Opening doors. Seen better days, though. Uh, 2000 GT. Yep, yeah, Celica 2000 GT. Seen lots of love. Look at those wheels. Are, they're plastic wheels, and they're worn. That one has seen some asphalt driveway mileage. There, we've looked at that one already. The Bluebird Wagons. Really nice pieces. What do we got hiding in here? Another. Whoa. Just about lost the, uh, my sleeve. Just about caught that uh, scissor truck. I believe this is another Bluebird. Uh, a Sunny 1200 Coupe. Metal base painted red. Really nice. Very heavy too. Here's a Bluebird. This is a Bluebird wagon, a little bit more modern. Actually, my sister was in New Zealand and bought one of these things for about $400 at the time and drove around the country with it. Bluebird wagon. Needless to say, I have to keep this one hidden from her because she would love to have that one. We've got one tray left here. And this will constitute my Tomica collection. I have not started buying anything newer that they've released as much as I'd love to. Too expensive. There is a Ford Model T. These are the old uh, Hupmobiles over here. We've got the Hupmobiles. They're Ford. Really cool. Whoa, Jesus. That's not good. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be breaking anything off these old cars at this point. Pretty hard to get. Most of these cars I did not seek out uh, to buy individually. Other than with some exceptions like the Volkswagen Golf and possibly I think that RX-7 and a Bluebird Wagon. Most of these just end up coming in big old lots of cars that I bought from all over the United States pretty much in flea markets. And every once in a while you get one of these cool little Tamikas hiding in a whole lot of chipped up crappy old Hot Wheels. I don't buy a lot of bulk lots anymore so I don't haven't really gotten a lot of interesting little vehicles hidden in. Uh, with wear and tear, such as these ones. It's a Zamboni. Toyota towing tractor. Oh, a Zamboni. It's an airplane tug. That's what it is. I do have a Zamboni somewhere. I guess it's not Tamika. Here's a airport shuttle vehicle, I would think. What scale would that be? 154th. Almost the same scale as the Austin Mini, actually. Shuttle vehicle. Pretty cool. There's that car with the bad proportions. And what do we got here? Some sort of racing car. Wheels pointing every which way. Nissan R382. Never even heard of that one. This is an interesting car. Can't remember what it's called. Six wheels on it. Six steering wheels. This was an actual race car. The Tyrell. How could I forget that? What a cool car! It did not, uh, it did not get featured in races for very long. I think there was some sort of issue with this car, whether it was overly competitive or some sort of mechanical problem. Cool car with quite a bit of history, though. It's been produced by a lot of different manufacturers back in the old days. Look at this one. Looks like the Tyrell, but not. A Panther 6. That's another real concept car, actually. I'm familiar with that car from some, one of those dream car books I have packed away in my library somewhere. So, that is my Tamika collection. I hope it's everything you uh, anticipated and more. But, uh, like I said, it would be nice to have some of the newer ones. At this point in time, the distribution in Canada is not the greatest. Actually, it's non-existent, so... They'd have to come all the way across the seas, and uh, that's pretty expensive. There's a lot of other nice brands I can buy locally that you know are quite a bit cheaper for the, the detail. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing a review on each of these cases. They're not all going to be exactly the same. This one was quite a long one, quite long-winded, but I wanted to present it as an introduction to you know a new series of videos I might be doing and a little bit more expedited. We also got a haul video coming up for you. This will be the 
Uh, it'll be the March haul. It's still growing. There's so much stuff there to show you. Stay tuned for more videos, and happy hunting.